Hello friends, I am here in the library, alone, in the dark, to read you a creepy poem. I hope your quarantine feels nice and safe, and not scary, like mine does, alone in the library. I will be reading Not the Kana by H.P. Lovecraft. It is a poem, so enjoy, or be scared, whichever you prefer. Not the Kana. It was in the pale garden of Zaius, the mist-shrouded gardens of Zaius, where blossoms the white nephilot, the redolent herald of midnight. There slumber the still lakes of crystal and the streamlets that flow without murmuring, smooth streamlets from caverns of Cathos, where broodeth the calm spirits of twilight. And over the lakes and the streamlets are bridges of pure alabaster, white bridges all cunningly carven with figures of fairies and demons. Here glimmer strange suns and strange planets, and strange is the crescent Benopis that sets yond the ivy-grown ramparts where thicken the dusk of the evening. Here fall the white vapors of Yabon, the thought-blotting vapors of Yabon, and here in the swirl of the vapors I saw the divine Nathakana, the garlanded, white Nathakana, the slender, black-haired Nathakana, the slow-eyed, red-lipped Nathakana, the silver-voiced, sweet Nathakana, the pale-robed, beloved Nathakana. And ever was she my beloved, from ages when time was unfashioned, from days when the stars were not fashioned, nor anything fashioned but Yabon. And here dwelt we ever and ever, the innocent children of Zaius, at peace in the paths and the arbors, white crowned with the blessed Nephilote. How oft would we float in the twilight or flower-covered pastures and hillsides, all white with the lowly Astalthon, the lowly yet lovely Astalthon, and dreams in a world made of dreaming, the dreams that are fairer than Aden, bright dreams that are truer than reason, so dreamed and so loved we through ages, till came the cursed season of Xanon, the demon-damned season of Xanon, when red shone the suns of the planets, and red gleamed the crescent Benapis, and red fell the vapors of Yabon. Then reddened the blossoms and streamlets and lakes that lay under the bridges, and even the calm alabaster glowed pink with uncanny reflections till all the carved fairies and demons leered redly from the backgrounds of shadow. Now reddened my vision, and madly I strove to peer through the dense curtain and glimpse the divine Nathakana, the pure, ever-pale Nathakana, the loved, the unchanged Nathakana, but vortex on vortex of madness beclouded my laboring vision, my damnable, reddening vision that built a new world for my seeing, a new world of redness and darkness, a horrible coma called living. So now, in this coma called living, I view the bright phantoms of beauty, the false, hollow phantoms of beauty that cloak all the devils of Xanon. I view them with infinite longing. So like do they seem to my loved one, yet foul from their eyes shines their evil, their cruel and pitiless evil, more evil than Thafron or Latgos, twice ill for its gorgeous concealment. And only in slumbers of midnight appears the lost maid Nathakana, the pallid, the pure Nathakana who fades at the glance of the dreamer. Again and again do I seek her, I woo with deep drafts of Plathotis, deep drafts brewed in wine of Astarte, and strengthened with tears of long weeping. I yearn for the gardens of Zaius, the lovely lost gardens of Zaius, where blossoms the white Nephilote, the redolent herald of midnight, the last potent draft I am brewing, a draft that the demons delight in, a draft that will banish the redness, the horrible coma called living, Soon, soon, if I fail not in brewing, the redness and madness will vanish, and deep in the worm people darkness will rot the base chains that have bound me. Once more shall the gardens of Zaius dawn white on my long tortured vision, and there, midst the vapors of Yabon, will stand the divine Nathakana, 
the deathless restored Nathakana whose like is not met with in living.